How you doing? This is Pastor Maxwell of New Beach Grove Baptist Church, and I wanted to invite you out to make sure you come worship with us. We do a lot of things for the community. We do the In Touch basketball program. We take care of the homeless. We teach leadership workshops. We teach real estate classes to make you ready to buy a home. We help you with building up your credit. We do a lot of different things here at Newbies Grow because our vision is to build kingdom-minded people to serve the community. Why don't you come in and check us out? We love you. Hope to see you here. Last week on Kingdom Minded. That's why we need God-filled women and men in politics to make sure that they put the kingdom before the world and the kingdom before America. Come on, evangelicals, for the gospel, I can't feel you at all. Can I just get political just for a moment? Can I just talk to the problem that I have when we say make America great again and we begin to talk about how we need to put America first? No, you need to put God first. Now stop lying on your money and saying in God we trust when you really trust the paper that is printed on more than you trust God. I'm still concerned for the people because racism still going on. I, I still concerned for the people because people still getting shot. Come on, somebody. I'm concerned for the people because sometimes people have to go get proof that they got a job and get detained to cast their check because they are people of color. Can I talk to somebody for a minute? I know that Martin Luther King had a dream, but can I talk to you right now? If we're not careful and if we don't stand up to what's going on and pray without ceasing, we will repeat history. Now stay tuned for a life-changing and powering word from Dr. Willard Maxwell Jr. All right, y'all, I went back to old school. I went to MC Hammer on y'all. Can't touch this. Can't touch this. I looked at your neighbor and say, can't touch this. Amen. In the present scripture, a new king sits upon the throne of Babylon, the ruler Belshazzar, a grandson of the great king Nebuchadnezzar and the son of Nebuchadnezzar, with whom he ruled for a number of years as the uh, co-regent or the co-king. The chapter opens with King Belshazzar giving a great banquet for a thousand of his nobles and their wives and concubines. Don't get too happy, men. Don't do that today. They had the wives and the side chicks and everybody at the party, all at the same table. Crazy party. Don't try it at home. This means <laughs> there were probably over 2,000 people present for the event. As will be seen, they would be very, that very night, the great Babylonian Empire would fall to Persia on October the 12th, 539 B.C. In the first four chapters of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar was the king ruling over Babylon. Now, as we indicated, the scene was shifted, has shifted, and this will be the last ruler of Babylon, King Belshazzar. Under King Nebuchadnezzar, Babylon became the greatest empire ever known to man. But after his death in 562 B.C., the empire began to rapidly deteriorate. But Belshazzar ruled as co-regent with his father, Nabonidus. I'm just killing his name. Let's start with the end, though. From about 553 to 539 B.C., Note that the scripture refers to him as the son of Nebuchadnezzar when he is actually the grandson of the great king. In ancient history, the word father is often used to refer to a male ancestor regardless of the generation. As mentioned, this would be a very, the very night of Babylonians' fall. This is the story that gives us the well-known phrase, the handwriting is on the wall, which announces imminent judgment. Although most people uh, know nothing about Belshazzar's great feast, many are familiar with the phrase. Belshazzar's feast and the handwriting on the wall is a picture of the coming judgment on the defiant and the pleasure seekers. I'm just going to break down the chapter for you. Verses 1 through 4 in chapter 5, the drunken, immoral banquet takes place, a picture of immorality, irreverence, and idolatry. Uh, verses 5 through 16, the the sudden and alarming handwriting on the wall, a picture of uh, the world's guilty uh, fear, helplessness, and hopelessness. Verses 17 to 31 uh, depicts the courageous explanation of the handwriting by Daniel and the pronouncement of the king's doom, the end of his wicked reign. Let's get into the story. Belshazzar hosted a huge banquet for the nobles of Babylon, a banquet that turned into an immoral and blasphemous orgy. 
Over 1,000 of the king's nobles and their wives and concubines attended the banquet. Ancient rulers were known for hosting lavish banquets to display the wealth, power, and the glory of their kingdom. Interestingly, the king held this large feast while the enemy, the Persian army, was camped outside the city gates laying siege to Babylon. Imagine such boldness. The leaders of Babylon must have felt that the city was impregnable because of its massive walls, lookout towers, and bronze gates. Also, the city appeared to be totally self-sustaining for the Euphrates River ran through the city to provide water, and there was enough food and supplies stored up to last many years. Feeling perfectly secure, Batelzar uh, uh, apparently uh, 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 planned this banquet to stir the morale of his people to face the daily assault of the Persians against the walls and the gates of the city. Soon after everyone arrived, both the king and the guests began to engage in wicked and defiant behavior. Not only were they their wives present for the banquet, but again, the concubines were there as well. With wine flowing freely and everyone gratifying the lust of their flesh, the party quickly degenerated. At some point during the festivities, the king thought of a way to show the superiority of the Babylonians, uh, so-called gods, over those other nations. He ordered his servants to bring the gold and silver cups of Nebuchadnezzar that he had plundered from the temple of Jerusalem. By drinking from these trophies of war, uh, the nobles would be reminded that their so-called gods had always made the Babylonian empire victorious. Remembering this fact would help encourage the nobles in the face of the Persian siege of the city. But Bethesda's all overlooked the fact that these particular cups were the sacred vessels of the Lord. The living and true God, the, they were holy, set apart for the use of the Lord and his service alone. Thus, when the king and his guests began to drink from the holy cups, they were committing blasphemous acts against the Lord. They were profaning the very name of God. They even toasted their false gods while they drank from the sacred cups dedicated to the Lord. Belshazzar and his nobles were guilty of three very serious acts of wickedness, drunkenness and immorality, Blasphemy against the Lord and idolatry. Look at this, though. God let all their sins ride until they touched the sacred vessels. Oh, y'all, y'all miss it. I, I got to talk like Jay Walden right now. You, you miss your place to shout right there. Let, 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 let me, he didn't do anything until they touched the sacred vessels. See, you're not shouting because you don't realize that you are an earthen vessel set aside and sacred for God. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. See, see, the funny thing about it is some of us are going through some stuff and don't even know we're going through it. And some people at your job so mad because God has you so covered, you don't even know you're under attack. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the what? The shadow of death, which means you don't even know what's going on. See, this is the amazing thing about God. God spoke the stars into existence and we don't even understand the stars. And, and they, he spoke the earth and the different moons and other, and, and other planets into existence. But the fun thing about it is when I was in school Pluto was a planet now they don't know what it is he spoke light into existence and we don't know if it's light or it's particles or waves or waves and particles we he spoke seeds into existence they still are amazed by the act of photosynthesis and they still can't quite understand it the earth sits on its axis tilted at a certain degree for winter and then tilts at another degree for summer it's amazing how he spoke it into existence the world is not too close to the sun that we burn up but but not too far away that we freeze. It's amazing that even though we're in North America, we're standing sideways, which means the centrifugal force of the world that spins 18 and a half miles per every second is spinning fast enough so we won't slide off the earth, but not so fast that we cast into the stratosphere. He spoke all these things into existence, and he could have spoke you into existence, but instead he walked out of glory, stooped down and made it personal, formed you with his hands, and blew the ruach or the breath of life of himself in you and after he made you he rested how in the world are you at your job worried about somebody in the next cubicle when you're fearfully and wonderfully made when God has made you in his image stop inboxing me whining about what's going on at your job and man and woman up and understand that you are son and daughter of the king I'm tired of pop Christians <laughs> tired God made you in his own image, and on the seventh day, he rested. 
because you took so much energy and you worried about some uncircumcised Philistines coming against you. You worried about some boss coming against you. How dare you? I don't even worry about a supervisor coming against me. Some of y'all worried about people on the same level that you on. I'd be dead gone. I want to cuss at you right now. I'd be dead gone if I sit up in here and let somebody on the same level as me drive me away from my job when God formed me by hand. He formed you. He said, this personal. God said, do all the hell you want to do. See, God chastised those who he loves. He don't chastise folk outside until they touch you. Yeah, y'all see. See, see. See, God said, have your oranges. Have your Jack Daniels. Get drunk as you want. Have as many women you want. Do whatever it is you want to do. But when they touched the sacred vessel of God, and when you really begin to understand who you are and understand that you're an earthen vessel made by God, you'll understand that so many people, people at your job done touch folk all the time in your family, done touch folk at your church. But some reason when they came and touched you, God said, I'm going to write. See, 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 y'all, y'all, see. Some people call me arrogant. I'm not arrogant. I just have confidence in God. And I know if you mess with me, God going to deal with you. I know they say God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. That ain't not one Bible I ever read before. There's some old school saints that tell you all the time. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you come against one of God's children, he'll show you he ain't good all the time. He'll be, oh, y'all don't hear me. You the child of the king and you crying in my inbox talking about how messed up your life is and God that made you fearfully and wonderfully. He gave you a good measure of blessing, pressed down, shaken together and running over. You the head and not the tail, the above and not beneath, the linen and not the borrow. How dare you keep whining to me every day going week as if that you don't have the power. I need to talk to you like Paul talked to Timothy. I need you to man up and understand that God did not give you a spirit of timidness but a power and of a sound mind. Walking around here, broke, busted, and disgusted, and you the child of the king. I'm tired of looking at broke Christians, too. Tired. You're supposed to be the lender, not the bar, the above and not beneath. And you walking around here, walking this defeated life because you... <sighs> Let me just read my sermon. God suddenly put an end to the wicked revelry. Without warning, the fingers of a human hand appeared out of nowhere and began writing on the wall of the banquet hall. Scripture describes the startling scene. It was at that very moment of the king's drunken blasphemy that the fingers of a human hand appeared, stunned the king. Watched as the fingers began to write a message on the plaster wall near the lampstand. The mood of the event quickly became somber. And a crippling fear gripped the king and the guests. Merriment and carousing ceased. Dancing stopped. Servers and attendants halted there in their trap. The musicians silenced their instruments. An eerie silence slowly swept through the hall as everyone watched the hand write four brief words on the wall. Sensing some ominous message, the king's face turned pale and terror seized his soul. I wish you could have been there when his knees began to knock so much that his legs gave way and he collapsed on the floor. The text says his loins were weakened. Come on, somebody. He peed on himself. Come on, somebody. When you begin to touch people of God, God will begin to do some stuff to some people to put the fear of God. Yeah. See, you don't know who you are. He touched everything in the house. He had the women. He had his wives and his concubines. He had everything. He, had his, he was chilling. He had anything he wanted to do evil. But the minute he touched the sacred vessel of God, do you know some people at your job terrified of you and you don't even know what's going on because you're so oblivious to what God is doing? Every time they try to sell a trap on you, something happens to them. Do you understand that God never promised you that a weapon would not be formed? But but he did promise you that the weapon would not prosper. I need you to start walking in the power and the kingship and queenship that God has ordained you to walk in. Stop walking around here defeated and mealy mouth and uh, uh. 
See, people think I be preaching about myself when I'm preaching about, hey, I'm preaching for you. I don't understand why people have to inbox me. I'm preaching about life all the time because I'm going to bring the wordness of the text to the endness of what's going on now. And you need to understand that you are a sacred vessel set aside for God. And when anybody interferes with your life, God intervenes. God said it's better to tie anchor around your neck than to touch one of my own. He said it's better to cast yourself in the fire than to touch my anointed. You got to begin to start walking around here knowing who you are, girl. Where you at, bro? Man up. You fearfully and wonderfully made. You will be victorious. <sighs> the text, he touched the sacred vessels. As soon as he was able, the king screamed out and summoned his occult advisor to come interpret the handwriting. When the advisors arrived, Belshazzar promised them both wealth and political rank. He said it was going to be meant, but they couldn't interpret it. But his mama came and said, look here, dude, man up. You can't not look like a king. Can, can I talk to you the way his mama talked to him, but talked to you in God? But see, she was saying, look, you the king, you need to man up. But see, you need to understand you the son or daughter of the king. You need to man and woman up and understand that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You need to understand that you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, the linen and not the bar. Can you understand that right now? Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Do you understand that you the child of the king? I need you to man up at your job. I need you to woman up in your job. Donald Trump can't stop you. The Republicans can't stop you. Democrats can't stop you. Blackface can't stop you. Racism can't stop you. Police brutality can't stop you. Nothing can stop you when you're a child of the king. You know what you need to do when you start going to your job so they won't know what you're talking about? Just start. Folk get on your nerves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get on my... Mm -hmm. You ain't got to say it out loud. Just... Mm -hmm. They might think you crazy, but... Mm -hmm. Keep on messing with me because God going to start writing on this wall in a minute. I know I'm in the cubicle right now, but I'm about to have the front of it if you keep messing with me. You know what's wrong with church folk? We too grown. Remember back in the day, somebody remembered you, I'm going to tell my mama, I'm going to tell my daddy. You ain't got to tell people your job. You better go tell your daddy the Lord of Lord and King of Kings. I tell him in a minute. See, when I be talking about some, ooh, don't mess with me, I don't be saying I'm going to do nothing. I'm going to go to God. I'm a snitch. <laughs> you call me to do this, God, and they keep messing with me. God be like, y'all don't hear me. He screamed out and called them, but they couldn't interpret it. Ain't it amazing how even though you think people don't notice who you are, they do notice you. They just don't give you credit till they need you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, feel me a little bit. I feel you. you, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he has been tucked away for 20 years. Then you're about 80 years old. Now they need him. And, and see, they say he got the strength of the God. And see, sometimes God will let you smell like some folk even though your anointing ain't theirs. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. See, you wonder how Moses kept walking in there talking about let my people go. Oh, not today. Okay, I'll be back tomorrow. Oh, oh Pharaoh, Pharaoh, let my people go. Oh, oh no. Oh, shit. No, it's like, <laughs> let my people go. Because he had enough Egypt on him, he smelled like them. See, one day your misery will become your ministry. See, everybody can't go to the hood and walk in and walk out because you want to go there with your Bugatti. You want to go there with your Benz. You want to go there with your tailored suit on. You need to know somebody that can go in there with some tore up jeans every now and then and smell. Yeah. <coughs> they called Daniel and they said he, he, he do what the gods do. He got this power, but it wasn't that. See, God will let them think that they, you're doing the same thing they're doing, and you just do it better than them. But no, it's just him, the one that's anointing you. Now, I know I done told this story before to some of the members, but y'all first-time visitors, y'all, don't, don't, don't you mess up my story. I'm going to tell this story again. You're going to act like you just heard it for the first time. When I was a young man, I was student teaching, 
And when I first met this lady, when I first walked in the building, Brother Lewis, she said, you ain't going to pass. Didn't say, hey. I'm like, hey, how you doing? You ain't going to pass. Okay. Doing my student teaching, like, wow, that's very rude of you, but, you know, I'm, well, I'm, ri I'm riding in there. So one day I go in the classroom because I forgot something, and I see her grabbing my stuff like she's trying to hide my notes. So I had to start taking my notes home. And so I got to the point where I, I would get to the point like some of y'all that inbox me now. So I'm going to go on and show y'all how I used to be like y'all. And I get to the point, and I get to the point I couldn't handle it. Oh, God, I can't handle it no more. I'd be crying on the way. Ooh. But think about it. I knew who, how powerful God was. I would ride two student teaching to Kurt Franklin. I'd ride back home to Tupac. So I still had a duality <laughs> going on. But I knew who my Savior was on the way to my little hell hole. But I got it on the way home. But anyway, the thing about it was, every time I get to the point I couldn't handle it, I'd be crying. But every time I got to the point I couldn't handle it, she had a car accident. She had three car accidents in 12 weeks. That when you had quarters back in the day. I ain't but 25, well, three years ago. <laughs> so, so, so every time, and she, the, she came in, she had a cast on her leg, and she walked in, and she said, you're going to pass, you're going to pass. And the thing about it was she looked at me like I had put witchcraft on her. But I didn't put witchcraft on her. That was God saying, touch not my anointed. I got your back. You touched a whole bunch of other student teachers, but you can't touch him. The thing about it was, even though people didn't know I was a church person, they knew something was on me differently. So one day I called. I'm talking about I'm, I'm crying. I don't care. Talk about me. I'm going to take karate from Claymore and beat you up. Talk about me. But the thing about it was, I called her, and I, was, I couldn't handle it. And she said, don't worry, you're going to pass. I said, how do you know? She said, because we already knew you already gifted. We already know. We don't have to. We weren't going to go by nothing she said because she's crazy. They told me that. They said the only reason we got her is because we had 21 student teachers, but we only had 21 supervisors. So we said we know Maxwell can handle it, so we're going to give him to her. They already knew that I was going to be Victoria. Now, I did say a few words that went hallelujah to them over the phone because I'm like, how in heaven are you going to let me go through all this and not tell me what's going on? Why? Because people notice your anointing. People are jealous of your anointing. People are in envious of your anointing. People have taken notice of you. They already see you powerful. Some people see you powerful and they try to be on your team. Some people see you powerful, they want to hate on you. Some people see you powerful, they want you to go higher. Some people try to pull you down. But all you need to know is the anointing of God that's on your life that caused people to notice you. Even when they don't go to church, they know something is different about you. They know that you have... I think I'm hyped this sermon. I think I was calm at 8 o'clock. I don't know what's going on. But all I need you to know is this. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And God, a little whole bunch of stuff pass with everybody else. But when they touch you, and the funny thing about it, some of y'all don't even know somebody touching you. It's just that God is handling what's going on. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Thank you. Y'all, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Some folks so mad at you, you don't even know they mad at you. Because you held and God is hiding you in his secret place. See, they can't even see you sometimes. He hides you in his secret place. They can't touch you. Every time they set a gallows for you, just like Haman did for Mordecai, it ends up falling on them. And they're wondering why they can't get rid of you. That lady tried a whole bunch of stuff with a lot of different people, but now she got somebody that... Hello, I'm Pastor Willa Maxwell of New Beast Grove. And I just wanted to let you know, I believe that God is speaking directly to us through this ministry. And I believe that there may be some messages that you've missed that are life changing for you and you need to take the time to order. Or maybe there's some message that you heard that you know a friend or, or a coworker or a family member, even an enemy's life may be changed. And let me tell you this, in the Bible it says, don't stack up treasures here on earth that the moth will eat or the water will wash away. It says stack up your treasures in heaven where they, where they will last for eternity. 
eternity. John says, in my father's house, there's many mantids. If it were not so, I would have told you. What I'm telling you is this, the way you stack up your crown and build your mantids in heaven is when you give a life changing word to someone or share salvation. You don't have to be the one bringing the word. You can just buy the word and send it to someone and you're stacking up treasures in heaven. I'm believing that you're going to make the right decision and you're going to get this series or get a CD or get a DVD for somebody. It's going to be life changing. And instead of building up treasures here on earth, you're going to take the time to build up the treasures in eternity where you will live with your father forever. Be blessed. Hey, how you doing? This is Pastor Maxwell. Look, I'm inviting not only New Beach Grove, but all of our online community and anyone who hears this message. Look, on March the 10th, on March the 10th at 8 and 11 a.m., Joe Sangle will be here from Enjoy. Enjoy used to be a company owned by John Maxwell, but he's bought it and taken over, and he teaches us how not only to raise money for churches, but how to take care of our own financial pockets. I hate when preachers always ask for money, but don't show their members how to make money and save money. We are a holistic church. So look, March 10th, 8 and 11, he will be here. But also at 2 p.m., we will have FLE. That's Financial Leadership Edu Experience. Financial Leadership Experience. He will teach you how to do a budget. He will teach you, I'm telling you, this guy is gifted. Some people have come last year or the year before, about two years ago, and they talked about how blessed they were. He will teach you how to make a budget. He will teach you how to save your money. He will also teach you how to give to God. He will also teach you how to pay yourself. I promise you, he will teach you how to calculate everything to the penny to make sure that you have an accurate budget. And that's how you begin to stack up wealth. He will show you how to save. He'll show you how to give. He'll show you how to invest. This man is given. And we know how Joe Sangal is. He's always what? He's always fired up. He's going to be here March 10th. Be here at 8 or 11 but be here at 8 or 11 and 2 p.m for your financial leadership experience newbies grove is taking care of all this all the expenses this is for you all right hopefully you increase your tithes and offerings but we ain't worried about that right now we're really worried about you being able to to take care of your family and take care of yourself. Do you know back in the day, you had garbage men and custodians riding around with Cadillacs and things of nature, why? Because they understood how to save and take care of their money and still take care of their families. You can do a lot with a little if you learn how to invest and if you learn how to save. So to join us March 10th, Sunday, March 10th, 8 and 11, or 8 or 11, and also 2 p.m. We will have our financial leadership experience. It's going to be great. I'm fired up.